print audience now. Right. With all due respect, we talk about this all the time. We grew up, I grew up in Madison Square Garden, Backland, Morocco. Mm -hmm. You could, you could, the Backland, Morocco match would get booed out of the arena now. Right. You know, my opinion, right? And as You're much right. as I loved it. And Morocco was one of the most versatile, greatest heels of I mean, all time. Some of the greatest, listen, I'm a WWE guy, I grew up a mm -hmm. WWE guy, a WWF guy. But when you watch, today's audience couldn't stand for it. No, and but it it's hard to be a writer. The attention okay, stands but, out there. Uh, but can I interrupt you about sure. that? Underneath that, they had Dusty and Superstar a bull rope match. I'm too, I'm sweet too sour. Look at the 22 inch pythons. And Dusty, I'm the working man, brother. I'm the working man, brother. I'm going to kick his ass, brother. Who went to see Morocco against Backlund? They went to see Superstar against Dusty. Yeah. They built that thing around. Mar I, I could tell you a story, and I don't know if I should, but I will. All right, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> you know how Morocco, uh, how uh, Backlund became champion? Go ahead, hit us with it. Well, I will tell you this. What I do know is that Vince called uh, Eddie, Eddie, and said, "Hey, okay. Eddie, I'm looking for a baby." Like, yeah. A, 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 okay. Right. Yeah. You're and then he goes, "Hey, right. I got this guy Bob Backlund." He said, "No, no. Okay, you got it. It's on you now." I'm there. I was a surrogate son. Okay. I fished. Do you think this was a tough job? A Mike Graham's partner and his best friend. And his father's flying me to towns, and Mike is driving. Okay? Yeah. Because I knew a secret that nobody else knew, except Terry Funk and Jim Barnett. And Monty and the Pharaoh in about yeah, one minute. Yeah, <laughs> So, Eddie said, calls me one day and said, let's go fishing. We used to fish a lot. He said, let's go fishing. Be in the office at 11 o'clock. I come up, 11 o'clock, I'm talking. He said, let's go phone rings the See story that. you just said is exactly the truth but eddie says no the guy you want because his tag team partner was steve kern he said the guy you want is steve kern wow. because his dad was a war hero he was a prisoner of war twice are you aware of that in world war ii and in vietnam you know how what his job was in vietnam to see how close a missile could get to a plane. He spent five and a half years with John, uh, John McCain, uh, McCain in, uh, in prison, right? That was reasonably safe. He said, you need to go with Kern because Kern's a better speaker. Wow. Okay? So, and it, and wow. Up. so he's looking for someone, and is he looking for Backlund? He's or? looking for Backlund because he's watched the TV. Gotcha, but he's like, no, Kern's the guy. Kern's gotcha. the guy because they were tag team partners. Understood. They were the Florida tag team champions. And Eddie said, no, uh, Vince, I think you're making a mistake. And he said, Eddie, I'll get him over. He said, you're going to have a hard time getting him over. Kern is instant heat with the father. You get it? Foreign heel, talk about his father, big deal. He spent nine years as a prison war. America is the shits, okay? He said, I, I guarantee you I'll get him over. And he said, no, I don't think you will. He said, Eddie, I'll bet you a hundred bucks I will. He said, okay, the bet's on. You remember what you said about Mar Morocco and Backland? Mm -hmm. Do they stack the cards? Pedro, Bruno, you're right. Superstar, Backlund, Dusty, Backlund, Snooker. Back, listen, they from the beginning, yeah. Snooker. Yeah. They, they, the, those every every card was stacked with Backlund. So you mean to tell me? Because we spent five to five or so years of our junior high high school hating Bob Backlund. We could have had Steve Kern as a villain coming in? We could in? have had Steve Kern as a baby, baby face. As a baby face. So, oh, okay. So let me ask you this. In All your right. opinion, yeah. knowing what you that know now. That would have been now, weird. Which should Steve Kern have become WWF champion? I think knowing what he knows now, superstar Billy Graham should have never lost that belt. Yeah. Uh, the, the difference was I love Steve Kern. He's one of my dearest friends. We grew up, him, me, and Mike. Nobody at that period was as charismatic as superstar Billy Graham. The greatest interviews of all times. I My greatest interviews, my list is King Curtis. There's nobody that topped King Curtis, okay? Everybody stole for King Curtis. Then it's superstar Billy Graham, 
Dusty Rhodes, Blackjack Mulligan, and Hulk Hogan. Superstar should have turned babyface against so, Ivan Koloff, Stars of the Stripes. So, so, but I ask you then, you said your top three, Vince Sr. was in your top three smartest guys. Right. Why didn't Vince Sr. have the foresight to say, look, Superstar's already got, he's already turning face regardless of what's already happening. Because, because he was the most honorable man I ever met in the wrestling business. He told Bob the day he came in, and the day he was going to win the belt. Wow. And in my heart, he knew it was the wrong thing to do for business. But he said, I gave him my word. And I'm going to keep my word. And that's why he stacked the cards. Because those cards were so stacked, you don't think those guys were getting uh, mid-card payoffs. No. You know what I mean? They were right. getting, they were walking out of the gardens with a lot less money for Vince when he, uh, Bruno was the champion or Pedro was the champion. Mm. He had, there was times, like I said, where he had Dusty and Superstar, he had Pedro, he had Bruno. And he had Andre. He had yeah. Andre. I mean, he yeah. had still had Calhoun. He had guys on that card and, and, and his underneath cards. And the other thing that he did, and a lot of people forget this, he was bringing in Piper, he was bringing in Flair when they were brand new guys who were all over those magazines, like you said you guys grew up on. When he would bring Valentine in, I'd lose my mind. Okay, really so, I mean, there it is. <laughs> but he would, so, have, he would have Flair and he would have uh, Piper on the undercards. But, but yeah. here's, here's and a lot of people don't realize then. that. So he promises Backlund the belt, right, he keeps his word. Why don't he yank it from him? Why did he keep? He had it on for like five years, right? I think five. Or five years. and a half he was years. Trying yeah. to get him over. Five I, and a half I, years. No, I don't think he was trying to get him over. I think that there was. People don't realize this. When do you, do you guys recall the incident when Pedro Morales was wrestling Blackjack Mulligan and Blackjack almost got killed? Mm. He got stabbed in the ring. Yeah. I okay. got a Puerto Rican rolled in the ring and cut him from the top of his hip to his boot. Mm. 700 and, stitches. And the guy, wow. the guy pissed on the, on the knife, mm -hmm. and Jack almost died. Oh. I think he said, and you got to realize, mm. back in 1957, the big riot was uh, Raka. And Edward Carpentier mm -hmm. against Dick the Bruiser and uh, Dr. Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. That started the 14, you could have to be 14 years old or older to get in the gardens. He saw that again coming. And he, they, at this time, you know, they had gone through a huge, huge federal lawsuit of monopoly in the 50s. They didn't want any more under the microscope from the government. That's really interesting. All right, well, we're going to take a quick commercial <clears throat> break, and then I want to talk about the man that you didn't mention in your top three, Vince McMahon Jr. Oh, we'll okay. be right back.